Look at this fish right there. Fish right there. Get some action now. Yeah. This week on Kentucky Field, we join a group of ladies for their very first bow fishing trip on the Ohio River. Nice shot. Put that thing right, right in a good spot. Next, it's a great time of year to catch some bass and crappie. So we're on the water with Darren Bowen to do just that. Oh, nice. That was about a four pounder. Then, a lot of people use boat ramps, but not many know how they're made. We did a five lane ramp. Each lane was 14 foot wide. We'll take a look at the largest boat ramp built in the state of Kentucky, so you can see for yourself. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Sweet. Yeah, muskrat? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> what do you know about that, man? That's a good fish, man. Nice male, small mouth. Healthy, pretty color. Cody, here. Find us one more good fish, Cody. As biologists, we, we catch ducks and we place bands on them. And it's just a really excellent place to see cottonmouths. What do you think? Like bull. That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Just because it's warm outside doesn't mean you need to put that bow and arrow away. This is a good time to take aim at some fish. We're literally in the shadows of the city of Louisville. We're going to do something unique tonight. What are we doing? We're going to go bow fishing. We're going to bow fish. You know, we hope to get rough fish, drum, invasive carp would be great. But uh, you've been doing this for a while, haven't you? Yes, sir. I got my first fish when I was eight years old. It was a gar probably about that big. That's the hardest ones to hit. <laughs> you get a gar that big, they're not that very big around. That was a good shot. Yeah. You're left-handed, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so we got a left-handed bow here. So once you put this on, this is the attachment that you bring the, the fish back right here. So you have to make sure that this piece is completely up here and free and clear. You don't want it back in here. Right? Yeah, if it's back here, then that can mess up your shop. Or wrapped around here in any way, shape, or form. You gotta be real careful with that. But essentially, once you draw this back and shoot it, this just free spools your line out. Yes, right? sir, unless there's a knot in it, and that's not good either. It's not good. So. And then this is your drag system. You just pull this in and you retrieve your line, hopefully with a fish on there, right? Yes, sir. You ever stuck this in the bottom? <laughs> Just in the bottom of the lake. Yeah. Plenty of times. Haven't got a night without doing it. It's been a year and a half since I've done this. I've shot fish at no end, but as far as under the lights, dark, it's been a year and a half. My favorite thing about bow fishing probably is just the experience and the thrill and being able to go out a bunch and just shoot fish, have fun. There we go. Nice. Uh, nice job. Ah, uh, really close. Come on, Lily, stay. Good girl. Oh. Look at this fish right there. Fish right there. Get some action now. Was that me? I think that's me. That was me. Oh, we got one right here. Got him. Nice job. What you do so you can get the fish off, you turn this and you loosen the tip. So you can move that like that, and the fish will slide right off. And that is how it's done. Oh, she got him too. Go, Rachel, go! Nice shot. Put that thing right, right in a good spot. Four women rolling down the Ohio River at midnight with bow and arrows in their hands. Whoa! These fish are smart enough to come around these women. Nice job. Rachel's on. Bam! Nice job, Rachel. 
if you like to shoot archery and you want to start shoot, shooting something beyond paper, this is the thing to do because you're going to get tons of opportunities to shoot. Well, and something too, other than the initial investment in a boat, it's like going to the Newport Aquarium. I yeah. mean, you, you, oh, you yeah. don't know what you're going to see. What do you know? Got one. As you see me shooting tonight, it looks like I'm not wearing a life jacket. I actually have got this fanny pack. Just pull this thing here and inflate this. I, I, I shoot this so that I'm free and don't worry about bowstrings. But uh, man, you're on the river, keep a life jacket on. It's, uh, it's really, really important that you wear a life jacket. Well, we got a pair of beaver. <laughs> Look at the wildlife we're seeing down here. Whoa! Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him! What in the... <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Oh, you oh. stupid thing. I'm throwing my bow at him. If I had a dollar for every thing I thought was a fish, I'd be a millionaire by now. Oh, how'd I miss that fish? Oh, there you go, Lil. Oh, oh my gosh. That one was pretty fun. <laughs> it's just pretty cool when you take a shot like that. Somebody's getting ready to get a shot. I got that fishy feeling right here. Same here. Same here. You were just in front of that. Where you go to school, Mercy? Mercy. You're gonna be a sophomore. You're gonna be a sophomore? And I heard that uh, you used to play volleyball. Yeah, I played uh, volleyball since third grade and club ball since fourth grade. She was a volleyball player, got hurt, and wanted to pick up a sport, and archery was available for her through the NAS program at Mercy. But this is your first time actually bow fishing or doing yeah. any type of hunting? Yeah, any type of hunting. These fish are basically playing dodgeball. It's a good try. You know one of the reasons I know it's your first time? Why? You got a white shirt on. You're gonna get slimed up and dirty tonight. I didn't tonight. get anything from Rachel to say dark. <laughs> so a year of getting really good with the bow, I mean, she shot as high as 290. Yes, she's got excellent. Ooh, that was pretty close. She really good shot, but it's it's hard to judge when those fish are deep exactly how to aim. It's, so we struggled a little bit. It's a struggle, I, and I told her, like, Lily, I'm telling you, the first time I went, I probably missed like 60 fish. It's yeah. just, it's, it's part, part of, of the it. game. It's, it's part, part of, of it. it. There's, It's no different than going out and chasing your first deer or anything else. I think I hit like literally like right in front of the thing. We had the Lily, Lily can't. You got we the did. next one, you got the next one. Shoot that fish, Lily. Down, down, down. Down, down. Good girl. Good got girl. it. Come She's on. on. She's barely on though. I think it's barely come on. Do you need me to Leah, stay. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh man, that yeah, was pretty cool. Right. Did you see where you hit that fish? No. You were that far from the top. Over. You were almost over top of it. So now lower. Lower. Hey, you hit it. <laughs> yes, so the approach that we decided to take was to shut all the lights off, which we ran all night running the lights. We got a bunch of fish, mm -hmm. decided to turn all the lights off and get at these parked barges and be as quiet as we possibly can, get down, literally come to full draw in the dark, spotlight on, bam. There Very first are. one that we go to. <laughs> We turn on, there are two 50 pound fish sitting there. Yep. And lo and behold, Lily, who's never shot a fish in her life. Right there, shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh. You're on, Lily, you're on. You're on, don't fight, don't, don't fight, Lily, don't fight it. Oh my gosh. She has a grand slam. <laughs> Puts an arrow on a 50 pound fish. I thought I didn't get it. Lily, you gotta be stoked. We gotta get air in this fish, or he's gonna pull off. As soon as you see that fish sticking. There we go, we got, two in him? Him. we got two in We got two in We chased it around the boat up and down the river. Yeah, it was kind of a goat rope for a minute, but it all worked out. <laughs> Look at that large mouth. Holy crap, <laughs> such a shot. That thing is huge. That's a big fish. Oh. I know what you mean by big head now. What we've got here is your first ever fish with a bow and arrow, is that right? Yeah. Get closer. And uh, <laughs> I believe you got a keeper. <laughs> well, it's this here is a big head carp. Obviously, we don't want these in any of our waters here in Kentucky, but you've helped us take one of them out, and wow, is that a big one. Yeah. <laughs> Was that exciting or what? Yeah, I didn't think I got it at first. Everybody's got a river or stream close by. Absolutely. It's something that you know, kids need to get out and do. It's a lot of fun. It's safe. Uh, 
It's a good time. It is fun. <laughs> Put smiles fun. on our faces. Lily <laughs> thinks it's really fun now. That is super, super exciting. I got a feeling you'll be back out here doing this again. Yeah, that's really so fun. For all your friends that have shot a bow and have thought, you know, shooting paper is a lot of fun. Shooting there, fish is fun too. <laughs> there's more opportunities. Yeah. Now. I'm gonna guess 48 pounds. What's it say? 48 and a half. Oh. <laughs> she was just telling me a minute ago, I didn't think I was ever going to hit one. She's like, but I did. My adrenaline spiked and now I'm ready for bed. She's tired now, so that's good. That's great. You might have to strap that to the top of Rachel's bug. <laughs> Her Volkswagen bug with that big fish going down. The crappie and bass pond is just winding up, but that doesn't mean it's not a good time to hit your local pond and try your luck. This is perfect fishing conditions as long as we don't get any lightning. I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. So Darren, we're out here in Western Kentucky on a private lake. The last time you and I spoke, you were making lures. And I've got a chance to use a couple of those lures and I've caught some fish on them. Today, we're going big because you're telling me this lake holds some big fish. It does have some big fish. It's one of my favorite places to come to, especially to try out some of the new baits that I've made to see how good they swim. And it's pretty sweet when you get a big hog on the other end. Oh of man, it. I tell you, it looks great. This impoundment's about five acres and it's got a lot of brush and a lot of cover. We're gonna try a top water bite and see if we can't get something and then we're gonna feed them whatever it takes. How about that? Let's about do that? it. Get my drag set. We've got a chance of some showers. Of course, we're catching one right now. According to the forecast, it's hit and miss pretty much all day, but I'd rather fish in these conditions instead of it being 90 degrees and a bluebird day. I can assure you these fish don't care that it's raining. As a matter of fact, they probably like it. <laughs> oh, big old crappie. Look at that. Man, that's a good Are crappie. Are you kidding me? Good crappie there go 15 inches. I'm telling you what, this lake size is a little small. The crappie are doing well. <laughs> yeah. Only thing that makes this thing better is some biscuits and fried potatoes. <laughs> oh, here we go. There he is. Oh, nice. That was about a four pounder. We'll take that. There we go. Look at that. This isn't exactly a really, really big one, but it's a very respectable bass. Hey, there's a lot of people out there wish they catch a four pound largemouth. Well, let's get this one back in the water. This back side of this, Chad, it's pretty deep. It's 18, 20 feet. Oh, there he is. Crappie, pretty decent crappie. Look at that, big old black crappie. That's a nice crappie. That is a nice crappie. You have to come back and hit that spot again. I know, right? <laughs> this is a bait, Chad, that I that I make. This is a rendition. Bagley stopped making this in 1984. It's called the Mighty Minnow. The original come in in like a shad, black and silver and whatnot. But I've put all kind of different paint schemes on it and I love that bait. Yeah, it's a nice looking little bait. And that's the thing about them things catch anything. I think I'd put him in the I live well. I think that's going in the live well. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty fish. Here we go. Looks like a crappie. The biggest crappie I've ever caught in my entire life came on a four or five inch swim bait. Oh yeah? And that crappie there was out in deeper water and it sure did come up there and just waylaid it. That's crazy. Another one for the skillet. You got that right. <laughs> Look at here. Look at this little thing. Got you a bass there. Look at that. Oh, it's crazy. I'll tell you what, it's that magical time of year. All the fish have moved up close to the bank. You never know what you're going to catch. Yeah, you just never know. I 
got him. I'm not sure what it is. Man, he choked that thing down. Little bass there, sitting out here on this grass edge. I'm throwing this Kitek swim bait, the uh, Swing Impact Fat. It's a little DNL jig head on there. Now, this exposed hook can get tricky when you're fishing a place that's got a lot of cover like we have here. But if you get it in and you work it pretty fast, you can almost turn a swim bait into a wake bait. This is only a quarter ounce head, so I can really get it out there and go. And these fish are coming up and just smoking this thing. There's a little one. Little fella just wanted a meal. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. Go grow up. Oh, one's running with mine right now. Ah, I'll settle down there. Man, I'm not sure what's happened to that fish. Been hit by something, look at that. Mm -hmm. You need to get off your diet <laughs> and start eating a little better. <laughs> Well, Darren, rain or shine, you go bass fishing in April, you gotta be prepared for whatever, and you never know what you're gonna catch either. Our main purpose this morning was bass, and we was catching crappie on swim baits, and crank baits, and flat square bill baits, and... Started out, we thought we were gonna topwater fish, and we did catch a pretty good fish, three and a half, four pound fish, right off the bat on, on a topwater, on a bait. bait that big, and then all of a sudden the rain came. It's supposed to be rainy this afternoon, sun came out, and we kept catching fish. And we caught the vast majority of them on two lures, crank baits that you've made, and swim baits from Kitech. That's right. And that's really what we caught our fish on. It was a great time. I've enjoyed fishing with you. You got some really good private ponds. I appreciate you bringing us out and let us get on them. Let's do it again sometime. Yes, Thanks sir. again. Thank you. Absolutely. Occupied. <laughs>
Greg Logan, your branch manager with our engineering division. So we just had our largest ramp ever in the state of Kentucky go down at Kentucky Dam Village, correct? Yes, or the largest ramp that we've ever actually pushed into the water. Really, there's a lot more that went on than just pouring slabs of concrete. You guys actually went in and busted up the old ramp and used that material because you readjusted the angle, which should make it easier for boaters to launch or load their boat, correct? Correct. Uh, that ramp had um, a short ramp, and they launched a lot of houseboats on that ramp, so they were backing off, uh, and we were getting complaints that uh, the percent of slope or grade was too steep. So we went out and did some sounding, figured out how far out in the water we could go uh, before it started flattening out, and checked the grade, and we needed quite a bit of fill material, so with that one, we were able to bust that concrete up in, in real small chunks and use that material for fill, and then we put some riprap on top of it. So that old ramp is still serving a purpose. It yeah. wasn't wasted. It's was, it still yeah. used to correct that angle and use for a base, correct? Yes. Yeah. Getting that slope right, you guys have got a formula for that, and getting that slope right is really important, I'm guessing. Correct, and uh, you know, pouring concrete on the bank and letting that cure up to push it into the water for your, your push-in part of the ramp, you know, that, that slope's gotta be perfect. Uh, it can't change what you've got on the bank. It has to be the same out in the water because when you start pushing, if it changes, then your concrete's gonna break. Talk a little bit about that push. I mean, the, what we just saw, we had five dozers down there, correct? Pushing that major slab of concrete out into the water. That's correct. We did a uh, uh, five lane ramp. Each lane was 14 foot wide. And uh, we, we wanted to put a dozer behind each lane. You know, we're pushing on top of uh, normally like a class two riprap. Concrete's all tied together with steel, uh, reinforced to hold it together. One lane, depending on the length or the thickness we pour, but just uh, an idea, one of those lanes probably weighed uh, uh, 45,000 pounds wow. per lane. And uh, uh, it, once you get it broke loose, then it's easy from that point. They'll, they'll just move it right on down. And you can tell while watching that push take place that, that it's all one piece and it's not busting apart. Obviously, you have a bulldozer pushing on one end if it wasn't all connected through all the lanes, then it would just bust that concrete. It, it would, it would come apart. Um, and all the dozers were different, different horsepower. We had guys on the ground. Uh, we had a guy for, for each man on the dozer, motioning for him to either speed up or slow down to try to keep them all together. Even though it's tied in, we want it all pushed evenly uh, into the water. So, uh, you know, once we get that ramp, in the water, and then the guys go to work. They'll start forming, they'll, they'll clean up any ruts that the dozers made pushing, they'll smooth it back out and uh, form up the next section behind it, put plastic down again, tie all the steel and, and, and pour again. And uh, you know, we, we get people come by and they see that we've poured this concrete and, uh, and then the next day they come and the concrete's gone and they ask the question, where did that concrete go? Well, it's out in the water now, so <laughs> it's almost like starting over again and, and, uh, and we'll just keep doing that until we, we pour up to the finished point. Nobody wants a new boat ramp, do they? <laughs> no. I'd say every lake in the state would love to have a new boat ramp, would they not? I'd say they would. I, we get a lot of people that uh, would like for us to come in and, and, and rebuild some of their ramps because of problems. People either backing off the end because they're too short or they're too steep. Well, I appreciate all the hard work that you guys do and uh, I look forward to using all these ramps. <laughs> I want to tour around and check them all out. So thanks, thanks again, I definitely appreciate it. Memorial Day is here, and this is the official start of the summer boating season. Please remember to wear your life jackets.
And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.